Good evening. They call this the sharp end, the business end, the days of reckoning. Early April is often a decisive time in football, but the key games are coming in torrents right now. And with each and every one, it seems, the picture changes. The panel will chew it all up and spit a fair bit out, as is their want. Welcome then to the Aston Villa manager, Graham Taylor, to Clive Allen, to John Barnes and to Ali McCoist. You can get involved too, as always. Email in your thoughts or questions via the website itv.com forward slash premiership. We will begin at Loftus Road in this evening's game between Fulham and Blackburn. While Rovers are still looking for a place in Europe, Fulham are now seeking a new manager with no new contract for Jean Tigana. Gabriel Clark was at tonight's game. So the gaffer is off. The toothpick is almost all chewed out. Fulham have called time on Jean Tigana's three years in charge. And tonight, talk turned to his successor. Mickey Adams. I think the best um, candidate for the job is Adam Pardew. I'd love Mickey Adams to come back. Steve Cockle. I'd like to see somebody like George Graham, a proven, pro proven manager. Been there, seen it, done it. Financially, we're not prepared to pay the sort of money that O'Leary, Viali or such people would want. I think Paul Hart from Knott's Forest has done a good job. I'd like to see him come. Good young manager coming up. Could do to us what uh, Moyes has done for Everton. Only in the final paragraph of his programme notes did Tagana discuss the subject, curtly saying it's a situation I have to accept. Fulham say their new boss will be appointed within the month. A win tonight would guarantee their premiership safety, but Blackburn needed to maintain their late push for Europe. Go, go. Clark moving to try and find himself some room, and Clark's racing onto this. Now he's a pot shot which brings a save out of Friedel. Cleared by Berg. Boa Morte will slide in and win it against Lucas Neal. Still the danger not clear. Then Damien Duff stoops to do the job. Marley did well in the first instance. And Malbrunk hit it sweetly. Dunn. Dunn looking to find Hakan Suka. Gary Flickcroft is in support too. Flickcross pull back. Touch by Dunn, shot by Cole and off the bar. Still Blackburn, Flickcroft again. Dunn trying to get the flick on, and ball appeals and the penalty's given against Lee Clark. Clark looks mystified, Graham Paul is in no doubt. Dunn against Taylor. 1-0 Blackburn. Rolled in with confidence. John Tigana wondering where his future lies. Certainly not at Fulham. Now it's Lucas Neal. Hakansuka and Cole both want it. It is Hakansuka and still the Turk. And he scored his first Blackburn Rovers goal. And Graham Zunis is as pleased as anyone. who soon as first got to know at Galatasaray has opened his Blackburn Rovers account and that's his first club goal in a year the last came for Palmer against Udinese in Serie A Duff, good work from Cole now it's Duff and Duff has found a way through Taylor to make it three Great work from Andy Cole, putting so much pressure on Finn, and Duff took it up and simply blasted it through and underneath Mike Taylor, who won't want to see this replay too often. Akansuka, nice flick on the Cole. Akansuka takes it up again, and he waltzes through to score the fourth. The sort of quality that Graham Soonis knew all about. Hakan Suka at the double. And Bo Morte. Legwinski. There are three on the edge of the area. This is Melbronk, and it's wild. Possibly Fulham's best opening of the entire match. Certainly the only time that they've had equal numbers in the Blackburn box. Should have met with something better from Steve Malbranc. 
Back in Suker, his first two goals in the Premier League. How pleased are you with him? I'm, I'm delighted. You know, I've worked with him before. He's a, he's a proper professional. He's a good football player. He came with a double hernia, and we thought we could get away with it between now and the end of the season, or when he arrived at the end of the season. Then, lo and behold, he breaks a leg in training. So we decided to have him operated on both his, on his, on his both hernias. And I think only now is he starting to get fit enough to play at this level. But he will, he will play at this level and score goals at this level. Just clear up the situation with Damien Duff. A lot of speculation is there last week. If it was a right offer, we'd, we'd be hard pressed to say no to them. But nobody wants to sell Damien. I certainly don't. And um, our chief executive doesn't want to sell them. So we, we hope we've got Damien to start the next season. What sort of manager are you looking for? What is the, the, the profile you want now for Fulham after Jean Tigano? We want someone who recognises what's already been achieved here in terms of the foundations that have been built, the academy, which is a terrific academy, great systems, great regimes. We want somebody who will recognise that, come in, enhance it and take it forward. And did Jean want to go? You need to ask Jean that. I'd like to. I'm sure you would. Mm, questions, questions at Fulham. As for the table, Blackburn moved to within three points of Liverpool in sixth spot and to within four of Everton, who of course still harbour Champions League aspirations. Blackburn's aspirations for Europe, therefore, still very much alive. At the other end, Fulham stuck on 38 points, still after 32 games played, a point ahead of Leeds United and Villa, and three ahead of Bolton and Birmingham. Um, Graham, before we get to the goals, an overview of the game and, and perhaps a season that effectively is just dribbling away for Fulham with the off-the-pitch issues yeah. they have. It's, it's, it's a sort of an ugly end to, to what at times had been a promising season. It does, and I think it is difficult when... You know, the players know that the manager is leaving, he knows himself, and there is no replacement there, or it's not going to be announced until the end of the season. And uh, it takes a lot of the sort of passion away from everything, mm. and I think that may be a problem for them as they come into the last uh, afters and games. If we look through what was a pretty good performance from Blackburn, Clive, not only the fact that they scored four, but that Hakan Sukur gets his name on the score sheet as well. I mean, the first one, perhaps, a little bit of contentiousness about the penalty. Well, it's... it's uh... When, when Nandy Cole fires a shot, it's a great block onto the crossbar. The ball doesn't go out of play, and it's turned back in uh, by Flickcroft. The slightest of touches by Damien Duff. I don't think Lee Clark can get out of the way of it. There's no intention that he's going to handle it. It is a difficult one, but the referee was on hand. He felt, probably from his view, that Clark's actually played it with his arm. Um, Dunn then steps up. He takes it very, very coolly. But for half an hour in this game, it could have gone either yeah. way. It wasn't, it wasn't the prettiest of games. It was hard fought, quite scrappy. But then this was real quality. Blackburn have had to wait for him, as Graham soon has said. He's been very unfortunate with injury, but this is top, top quality. An international striker of repute, 36 goals in 81 yeah. internationals. So Graham knew that he could do that. And that is, for me, world-class finishing. Well, I was Wonderful thinking... first touch, great awareness with a second, but for me, the finish, knocking it under the mm. goalkeeper, fantastic. Then, then Andy Cole does some great work. Done, uh, Duff breaks in, and people will be disappointed mm. with that from the angle. He, he he actually hasn't got himself set, and he and he's he's gone past him before he can react to it. And um, really, at this stage, Fulham Fulham were looking quite ragged were. and looking for some guidance. But this topped the evening off. It's a wonderful touch. It's, it's great the way he attempts to shoot and everybody goes for it, drags it inside and the cornister finishes. I'll, oh. I'll ask you the interesting thing, right? See if he hasn't scored the first goal. Does he do that for the second goal? Um, a man, I think, like him, yes, he probably does. I, I think that the, whole, the first goal breeds your confidence. Definitely. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's a weight off his shoulders. That's yeah. his first goal in the Premier League and he's a fantastic player but confidence plays a big factor in all players. And once that first goal went in, you really will see. Yeah. And I believe from now to the end of the season, you'll see the real Hakan Suka. It's interesting, we think back to the World Cup, which is when we last saw much of him, and he looked oh, he awesome. his teammates, he looked awful. He Nobody given, he has, he has would have given 10 pence for him. For the last six, seven, eight years, yeah. he's been the superstar of Turkish football. He went to, first of all, over, when he first went to Italy, with lots of expectations, and it didn't work out for him at Torino. Came back to Turkey, scored goals, went to Parma, didn't work out for him. So coming to Blackburn, Graham, Graham Sunis has said he's the best player he's worked with, best professional, best player he's worked with, so he knows the qualities that he has. OK, thank you. Good for Blackburn, bad for Fulham. When we come back, can Newcastle come back from this? Title trouble for the tune. As Rooney and the ref make the headlines. Now, it all seemed set up for Newcastle yesterday. Win at Everton and they were right in the hunt, just three points behind the big two. 
But the pre-match hype overlooked Everton's ambitions, a teenager's refusal to get out of the spotlight, and enough controversy and cracking action to fill a handful of cup ties. I've been coming here since 1948. I've never seen a kid like Wayne Rooney. Never in my life. It's the buzz around Goodson Park now, and it's all because of him. Genius. He's a footballer genius. Never seen anything like him. I'm here to support Wayne Rooney. He's the best thing I've seen from George Best. Everton have only one problem with Wayne Rooney. Even when he's sharing the field with an England legend, he just can't help stealing the show. Here's more evidence the nation's finally found a natural successor to Alan Shearer. A precise, powerful header. Talk like that is making David Moyes fretful on behalf of his teenage prodigy, but the lad himself seems unaffected. If it wasn't for Andy O'Brien's handball, he'd have been clear for a second. No booking. Neil Barry decided it wasn't a goal-scoring chance, even for Rooney. So Newcastle could still see a way back. And when Jonathan Woodgate looked for Laurent Robert, the Frenchman had already worked out his next move. A ball can not be struck more sweetly, and Richard Wright's touch had no effect. Newcastle needed the maximum return to maintain their championship challenge and almost turned the score round by the break. This time Wright's fingertips did make a difference. Woodgate's header flicked onto the bar. If Sir Bobby was irritated, he'd seen nothing yet. The game hinged on a hectic spell in the second half. Craig Bellamy foraging so nearly found an incisive pass for Shearer. Everton cleared their lines, but in the process, Thomas Gravison caught Olivier Bernard thigh high, a challenge which brought both benches to their feet. Even David Moyes joining the chorus for a break in play so the Newcastle man could be treated. Referee Barry had more than one look back at Bernard, but opted not to blow. And by now, Rooney had spotted the move's potential. Kevin Campbell tumbled under Woodgate's challenge. But how Gravison had avoided a red card when he'd already been booked was anybody's guess. David Unsworth added insult to injury. United's slim title hopes were ebbing away, unless they could muster a thrilling finale. There's enough energy and flair in Robson's side to keep that possibility alive. But his outstanding young prop look absolutely certain now to be kept waiting for silverware. Pretty patterns or the more direct approach, they just couldn't come back for a second time. And they left Goodison Park feeling hard done by. I mean, any fair-minded guy, whether you're Plymouth or Leicester or Liverpool supporter or Everton supporter, even Newcastle, will know that the referee made a pretty poor decision. And in fact, the lad could have got sent off as it happens, but uh, some days you get them, you know, and sometimes, some days you don't, and today we didn't get that decision. It's cost us a match, but no point bleeping about it. You know, we felt it was a free kick in the middle of the park, there was no doubt in that, and uh, it didn't go their way. We weren't talking about winning the championship, but we knew if we could just hover around Manchester United and Arsenal, who knows? But we've lost three points today, which really takes away, I think, uh, the, the, the slender chances that we had of perhaps winning it. Inevitably, all eyes were on Wayne Rooney today after the week he's had, and he's delivered again. He played very well today, Wayne. We were delighted with his performance, and uh, he got a good centre forwards goal today. And uh, yes, we are pleased today. Everton have got a, uh, a steal, they've got a, a beautiful player on their hands. Good luck to them. Mm, they have indeed. We'll list the situation at the top. Just five goals separate Arsenal and Manchester United now. Newcastle, of course, six points back after that defeat and only four ahead of Chelsea. Everton reclaimed fifth spot at Liverpool's expense. Certainly some controversy about uh, the move that led to the winner, Ali. But before we get to that, you can understand why everybody says let's just not get too carried away about Wayne Rooney for his own sake. Mm -hmm. And yet he refuses to go away oh, with his football. Football's outstanding. But the thing that pleased me about his goal, Matt, was the fact that it's more like a, a real goal scorer's goal, if you mm. like. I think Bernard should have stepped out. But it's a centre forward's goal and it's a, a very clinical finish, which to a certain degree we haven't really seen from him. I thought he's only 17, but Bernard plays him on side there and he's wrong side of him. But there's no stop in the head. anticipation, isn't it? Yeah. Really? He's <coughs> sensing that there might be a flick, there might be an opportunity there, and he's on it. He reacts before anybody. That's the hallmark of a goal scorer. Well, I think it's a great thing because we spoke about his strength, we spoke about his pace, we spoke about everything. But it's nice to see him get a goal scorer's goal. You wonder where he goes from here, don't you? <laughs> Just up, up. <laughs> yeah, and onto the back pages every day, I'm sure. Um, Newcastle then get a deserved 
I guess, in, on the balance of play, John equaliser, and a cracker it was too. Yeah, Robert always scores spectacular goals. You know, he's got a good left foot. Jonathan Woodgate does very well in bringing the ball forward and plays a great ball. There are lots of bodies in front of him, and to put that out to, to Robert, he has one thing in mind when he gets it. Fantastic strike. Goalkeeper will be disappointed, I feel. He's a little bit outside his near post when the shot comes in, and he actually gets a good hand to it. If you can see just as it, as it goes over him, he gets a very good hand to it, and you would expect him to push that out. And the strike was fantastic. It goes in the top corner. They all look good. But I think the goalkeeper would be slow, although he made up for it with two excellent saves later on. He would have been disappointed with that. OK, now there were a couple of contentious issues on a, a weekend. The referees figured prominently, Clive. The first one, a decision not to card Andy O'Brien for a pretty clear handball. Yes, it is a clear handball. And, uh, is it a goal-scoring opportunity? Absolutely, tonight? yes. Especially when you, you know that uh, young Rooney is going to get yeah. on to that. And, and I think he knows that because he, he clearly uses his arm. Not to even stop a it. yellow, let alone a red. The referee's pulled it up, so he knows there's a handball. His interpretation, I would feel, is that it wasn't intentional. But a very, very poor decision. Hmm. OK, long passage of play that started with the, the big controversy, if you like, Graham, and that eventually led to the winner. Uh, just start us off with your thoughts on, on this incident. Yeah, but if you look at Bellamy, first of all, yeah. we forget it. That's a tremendous piece <laughs> of skill. There goes Shearer to the goal-scoring part. Doesn't ball doesn't come. Cleared out. And here, look where the referee is. Now you've got to see that. Yeah, I can't believe that he hasn't seen it. He looks around again to see what's happening and plays now continuing. But he's looked again there to see, and he still hasn't stopped play at all, and uh, Barnard's not moved. No. And we're letting the play go on here now. Now, it, it could be argued uh, <clears throat> Woodgate does get caught. He could have stepped up, I suppose, there. I don't think he should have been sent off for that. I think he was right in there. I think it was more a side view, but it was a definite penalty. But there's Bobby shaking his head, and I can well understand why he's shaking it. I just wonder, boys, how the ref, at the distance he was, could not see that as a foul let alone the fact that the boy might need immediate treatment. Well, could there, have been a there's no way injury. you can explain it, Matt. It's as simple as that, because everybody sees it with a free kick, a definite free kick, mm -hmm. and effectively, you know, maybe in a long-term thing, it is, it's killed off Newcastle's Premiership hopes. Mm. That one winning decision. I, I, as Ali said, you can't see why he didn't give it. The one thing I would say is grabs and actually half pulls out as he makes contact, so maybe the referee sees him half <laughs> pulling out and thinking maybe he hasn't... I'm just trying for the referee here, it's not working, is it? I mean, yeah, it, it's definitely a free kick. The referee should have seen it, but, you know, I, I, inexplicable. Yeah, OK, well, let's, uh, I guess, to an extent, contrast that, Ali, with, um, with what happened at Old Trafford the day before. Mm -hmm. Much talk about referees' entitlement to red cards, penalties, and so on and so forth. Certainly, the view over the weekend was that he got this right. The Once the referee gives a penalty, uh, Hippie makes a mistake initially. Scholes got far too much room there. And Traore, once he comes, he's got to make the ball. Great turn with the centre forward, Van Nistelrooy, superb turn. But once the referee gives a penalty there, Matt, it's a penalty. I and that's your foul, mate, but outside the box, the left leg comes across. But is the red a card a definite red card? Yes, yeah, that's a goal-scoring opportunity. Yes. Well, what are we you really at goal I know you two strikers are going to say yes, but John? He's clean I through think, and he's in I on goal. I think if a, if a defender like Johnson Woodgate put the penalty away well, he's in a position whereby he can make a challenge. Mm. He has fouled him and he is slightly behind him. It's not a situation where he's definitely right behind him and he pulls him back or he trips him. They're both jostling with each other. I think if he doesn't foul him, he's still close enough to maybe make a tackle, then it's a penalty, but not a red card. Graham, penalty red card? It's a, a, a sending off offence. He's it, behind him, he's rules. pulled it back. Absolutely. That's the rules of it. Yeah. It's a sending off offence. And yet, having said that, people would have a go at me. I think Woodgate should have stayed on. I think Woodgate comes far more from the side of things. I think Kevin Campbell makes a, 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 you know, he goes down well for it. So you're saying no sending off at Everton, but a sending off at I think so. I, was quite, I agree with both <laughs> the referees on both. Judge Dredd, <laughs> I like to call him. Uh, don't worry yeah. about it. Uh, we'll get over it. We'll get over it. Just to really, you know, put the icing on the cake, John, let's have a look at the other three goals that Manchester United scored on Saturday. There were a couple of perfect. They should have been allowed either. No, well, absolutely. <laughs> the other, the, the second penalty, a penalty again? Well, you're asking the wrong person because <laughs> there you can see, first of all, the contact's outside the box. And secondly, it's a situation where Biscan is trying to clear the ball. When Scolzi he touches the ball, he can't even get out of the way. He can't get out of the way. Scolzi is always going to run into him. That is maybe obstruction. But he kicks possibly, him. Watch, he possibly, kicks him you look, he kicks possibly him. an indirect free kick in the box. Possibly for obstruction. Yes. But I, I think that's, I think it could have been well, an indirect free kick. You can have obstruction anymore, can you? This is I don't know. Let's I mean, go I'm to Judge Dredd again. What are the laws on the <laughs> obstruction I'm only a manager. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, but I mean, here, this is great movement. Van, this, this is all about Van Nistelrooy. Yeah. Not only does he hold the ball up well, but look at his first movement. To get into the box on the end of the cross, which he possibly should have got on the end of, and Giggs, he comes in to score his first goal at Old Trafford for a couple of years, I think, yeah. in the Premier League. Which he's is really, a, which he's is really clever, Van Nistelrooy. He positions himself to get a finish all the time. Mm. He's good outside the box, makes things difficult for defenders. 
but his, his positioning to, to get a finish is unbelievable. And this goal by Solskjaer, people look at it and it goes through Chiori's legs and people think that it's fortunate, but Solskjaer does that all the time. As he moves it to the side, he waits for the defender to lift his leg and he aims to put the ball through because the goalkeeper's lost if it goes through the defender's legs and he does that so often and that's a great finish. Just, um, I guess, the significance of that then became very apparent later in the afternoon, the result, I mean, because mm. you then held the champions uh, at Villa Park and played pretty well, I guess, as we looked through the action. Well, we play against a very, very good side. Mm. And uh, I know Arsene afterwards said one or two things, uh, but well, they split either, us but open yeah. there. And probably Peter sort of uh, would be a bit disappointed and only seems De La Cruz was just caught on his back foot a little bit there. But when they take a lead of 1-0, you do worry about it a little bit, yeah. 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 He, just, uh, he just anticipates the... He the just got quicker. caught, yeah. And he came in there. But you then expect uh, Arsenal to go on. And but you were in a bit of spell of pressure here when you got the equaliser. Oh, yeah. We did okay. Mm. We did fine here. Bit of help from Colo Toure. Own goal. Quite happy. I see all back wasn't bothered. He was claiming no, that. Well, stuff. That's what a good striker should do once. I mean, these <laughs> fellas heel. The ball goes in the net and you're nearest there. Run away with your hands in the. Well, uh, it's just <laughs> important. <laughs> I'll <laughs> say afterwards. Uh, mm. Made a couple of points. I think you referred to about negative play and all the rest of it. But what are you supposed to do? Well, I think he'd be disappointed, obviously, having uh, um, sort of uh, lost the two points. But I mean, this is a side, as I said afterwards, that's probably one of the best counter-attacking uh, counter sides, certainly in this country, and possibly in Europe. And if you throw yourself at them they'll go from one end of the pitch to those in five seconds and put it in the net. Mm. So we just played a different formation. We were the home side. It was mentally, there was a lot of pressure on us at the present time. And for me to ask the players to go out there as the home side and play like that, as I thought it was the best way for us to get a result, yeah. I was very proud of the players because mentally that was a tough thing for them to do because our results aren't too clever at the present time. Well, no, indeed, if we look at the bottom eight uh, of the Premiership and how things sit, how big a point do you think that might be, given that every point is now extremely precious? And, and of course, it, it also ties in with what games you have left, because as we keep saying on this programme, yeah. fixtures are only so important, but you have got yeah. big games every well, week now. They're all big games. It doesn't matter who you play. Everybody had said we would lose against Arsenal. So you don't really know. People make out, well, you mm. can't get a point there, you can get a point there. Yeah. It doesn't work out like that. But from my own point of view, and I know that probably people won't always see it, that's what I see is on 37 points, six points ahead of West Ham. Why are we looking back? Let's look forward. Yeah. Very, very difficult to stop that. Always keep looking, always keep looking forward. OK, now, um, some speculation, I know, that come the summer you might become a director of football, and I don't know how much that is just press talk. Mm. I mean, why don't you put the record straight and just explain what you're... You've got another year on your contract well, as manager. Well, most of it is press talk, isn't yeah. it? But you see, Howard's gone at Sunderland, yeah. Terry's gone at Leeds, I'm the next in the line. Right. <laughs> is that in age, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> or beauty. There was a time when I could tell him off about that sort of comment, you know. Yeah. But I know, I know you found it, and I guess everybody who comes out of football and goes back in, I'm sure Terry would say, say the same. There's a culture shock to the way football has, mm -hmm. has changed, perhaps, in the, in the small pause that you had out of it. Has it been a, a culture well, shock Well, I don't you? think that has changed as, as much as all of that. I mean, mm. I'd been in the Premiership uh, a couple of years early, so it hadn't done as well. Um, it's no different than anything else. If the results are not going well, people look at the manager's position. I'm no different from anyone else. But you're, as far as you're concerned, you're happy in the job. I've got a year left on my contract. You sail on. A year left on my contract. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. For the moment, Graham, after the break, we look at the other candidates for the drop. Leeds, of course, now look a different team. Bolton are bang in form. West Ham nicked another precious point, while Birmingham had their pocket picked.